Hello, my name is Josh Yu. I'm a molecular and cell biology major from Frederick, Maryland. And today I'd like to talk to you about my research that I did this summer, which is nanomedicine and cancer therapy, uh, its internalization mechanisms, and the correlation between intracellular distribution and cytotoxicity. So here is some background on nanoparticles. Nanoparticles are an emerging method for selective drug delivery in cancer treatment. And this is because they mitigate many of the issues associated with uh, small molecule drugs, particularly their non-specificity and systemic toxicity, which basically means they cause uh, unintended side effects that we don't want occurring. However, with nanoparticles, we're actually able to encapsulate these drugs, extend their circulation lifetimes, and uh, selectively target whatever cells or tissues uh, we desire. So here you can see there are many different types of nanocarriers, um, each with their own distinct properties and potential applications. So the purpose of my project is first to examine the internalization mechanisms. How do nanoparticles get inside the cell? This in turn affects um, the intracellular distribution of these particles, so where they go inside the cell. Um, which I would like to correlate with cytotoxicity, which is its toxicity to different types of cells, as in cancerous or non-cancerous cells. And finally, in this review, I will also provide um, some shortcomings with nanotherapeutics and also some potential avenues of future research that I would like to cover. So the first barrier to nanoparticles in drug delivery for cancer treatment is the mechanism of internalization, how it gets inside the cell. And there are a variety of physical chemical properties such as size, uh, shape, charge, and all of these listed here that in turn affect its biocompatibility and toxicity and also whether it's taken up by the cell or not. These in turn affect the clinical and preclinical trials um, involved in eventually creating a nanotherapeutic for cancer treatment. So this is an example of phagocytosis. This is what we don't want occurring to our nanoparticles as they journey through the bloodstream. What occurs is there's this protein and immunoglobin coat here that um, covers the outside of the nanoparticle. And as a result of this, they're taken up by white blood cells, which we don't want since they're now not reaching their intended target um, that we specifically targeted using these ligands. And here is an example of these ligands. In clathrin-mediated endocytosis, the nanoparticles are specifically labeled and recognized by cells. And as such, they are taken inside the cells and enter the endocytic pathway. This is more favorable and also more specific uh, for specific targeting of our nanoparticles. Obviously, once the nanoparticles move inside the cell, there's the issue of subcellular targeting, which basically means where the nanoparticles go inside the cells. What organelles uh, do we want them to target? And in addition to this, they must also initiate endosomal escape um, because otherwise they will be degraded by the lysosomes through the endocytic pathway that I previously mentioned. There are some modifications we can make for this. Um, since lysosomes have a very acidic pH, you can make pH sensitive modifications to help the nanoparticles get out of the endosomes and avoid being degraded. One of the important targets that we have to reach subcellularly is the nucleus, uh, home to DNA. And uh, changes to structure and mutations in DNA can cause cancer. Um, in this study, you can see that there are different sizes of gold nanoparticles with different formulations. And the smaller nanoparticles are able to successfully go into the nucleus and reach their intended target and stop RNA transcription. They're also able to be labeled with these specific nuclear localization signals, which allow for more of an active transport into the nucleus so that they can reach their intended target. In addition, we also have the mitochondria. The mitochondria is important because if communication fails between the mitochondria and other organelles in the cell, um, then there can be uh, the onset of tumor genesis. And here in this study, we see another formulation of nanoparticles, mesoporous silica nanoparticles, uh, loaded with doxorubicin, which is a common chemotherapeutic treatment. And as you can see here, they're successfully endocytosed and specifically target the mitochondria and the DNA associated with it. 
And finally, we have the issue of cytotoxicity. So our third challenge involves the current chemotherapy treatments that suffer from nonspecific and um, systemic toxicity. As you can see, nanoparticles solve this issue by reducing systemic toxicity and also increasing toxicity to the cells that we want them to target. In this study, you see these cholesterol block copolymer nanoparticles, uh, which is again another formulation that allows uh, the release of doxorubicin after the nanoparticles enter the cell. These were actually found to be more toxic than other variants of nanoparticles and were also non-toxic to healthy cells, which is of course beneficial for ultimately treating cancer. And finally, this is what I would have done had I uh, not been in an online format this summer. Um, these are some images of fluorescent labels in different uh, cancer cells. As you can see, these are different dyes. Uh, DAPI binds to DNA and labels the nucleus. A mitotracker labels the mitochondria, and these are the merged images, and also the lysotracker for labeling the lysosomes. This allows us to see uh, where in the cell the nanoparticles are going based on uh, these fluorescent dyes. And finally, uh, here in this slide, we see these different uh, doxorubicin formulations, which are um, doxorubicin, the free doxorubicin variant, doxal, liposomal doxorubicin, and our own non-cleavable doxorubicin variants. Um, and as you can see, we're able to determine distribution here um, through the fluorescence shown. In conclusion, we can see that research in this area is rapidly advancing. However, we do want to cover some additional research regarding intracellular distribution and its correlation with cytotoxicity. This will allow us to further assess nanobio interactions and generally build a more optimized nanoparticle for the future of nanotherapeutics. Thank you to the Holster program, Mr. and Mrs. Holster, Dr. Vin Moscardelli, and of course the Wu Lab, Dr. Julian Liu, Nirnoi Dan, and Sterling Glass for their help and assistance as I've gone through this project. Thank you for your time.